Now, let me discuss the drugs used in the dermatology. Now, if you see the group of drugs which are used in dermatology, like we have the drugs like glucocorticoids. Next to the glucocorticoids, we have retinoids. And thirdly, we have the photochemotherapy, right? Photochemotherapy. Next to photochemotherapy, we have anti-metabolite group of drugs. Next to the anti-metabolites, we have calcineurin inhibitors. Right? Next to the anti-metabolites, we have calcineurin inhibitors. And next to the calcineurin inhibitors, we have the biological agents which are used in dermatology right biological agents and next to the biological agents we have sunscreens and other agents right we have sunscreens and as well as the other agents so these are the group of drugs which are used in dermatology now first let me discuss about the glucocorticoids right first let me discuss about the glucocorticoids which are being used in dermatology now first let me give you the list of glucocorticoids which are used in dermatology this particular glucocorticoids include number one beta metasone next we have clobetasol then we have difluorosone then we have halobetasol then we have the drug called amsinonide then we have desoxymetasone then we have flucinonide then we have halcinonide next we have triamcinolone then we have fluorandrinolide then we have hydrocortisone mometasone aclometasone dexamethasone disonide these are the formulations of the glucocorticoids which can be used topically right these are the group of glucocorticoids which are used topically right now let me tell you the potency remember the potency of these particular glucocorticoids is traditionally measured using vasoconstrictor assay right so the potency of the glucocorticoids is traditionally measured using what is called as vasoconstrictor assay right vasoconstrictor assay now what do you mean by this particular vasoconstrictor assay the vasoconstrictor assay it tells you the area of skin that is being blanched right so it tells you about the area of skin which has undergone right which has undergone blanching so this is how the potency of the glucocorticoids is being measured now so i have given you the list of glucocorticoids which are being used topically in the dermatological problems now the multiple choice question here is which is the most potent topical steroid which is the least potent topical steroid remember the most potent topical corticosteroid or glucocorticoid is your beta metasone dipropionate right so the most potent right the most potent is beta metasone dipropionate whereas you take the least potent glucocorticoid the least potent glucocorticoid which is topically used is your hydrocortisone so remember least potent is right the least potent is the hydrocortisone all right so now let me tell you the adverse effects that will be associated with these glucocorticoids on chronic use right so next let me discuss the adverse effects of glucocorticoids now if you take the adverse effects of the glucocorticoids first and foremost on the chronic use of this particular glucocorticoids the skin gets atrophied 
and that particular skin which has been atrophied we call that particular skin as cigarette paper skin okay so number one the individual can develop skin atrophy right which is nothing but right which is nothing but cigarette paper like skin next now apart from this these topical corticosteroids they can cause the purple sway over the skin that is a stretch marks so wherein the individual can also have the stray they will also develop telangiectasia right they will also develop telangiectasia and apart from this the individual can also have purpura and acne form eruptions right purpura and acne form eruptions so these are the side effects which are occurring by the chronic use right so let me shortly revise this glucocorticoids remember we have many glucocorticoids which are being used for the dermatological problems out of which the beta beta methasone is most potent hydrocortisone is the least potent glucocorticoid and the potency of these agents is traditionally measured using the vasoconstrictor assay that is nothing but the area of the skin that has undergone blanching by this particular glucocorticoid is what will tell you the potency and upon chronic use the adverse effects include the skin atrophy striae telangiectasia purpura and as well as acne form eruptions now let me discuss the next group of drugs that is retinoids now if you take these retinoids we classify these retinoids into three generations first generation second generation and as well as the third generation retinoids now let me tell you the classification of this particular retinoids so we have first generation retinoids then we have second generation retinoids and then we have the third generation retinoids now if you take the first generation retinoids they include retinol tretinoin isotretinoin and as well as allitretinoin okay so the first generation they include retinol is one particular drug then we have the other drug that is tretinoin then we have isotretinoin and lastly we have al retinoin so this particular first generation group of drugs these are the four drugs retinol tretinoin isotretinoin and as well as allitretinoin next next to first generation if you take the second generation drugs this include acetretin so the drug in the second generation it includes acetretin next you take the third generation retinoids the third generation retinoids it includes tazarotene right it includes tazarotene next to this particular tazarotene we have bexarotene right next what we have is a bexarotene next apart from this first generation second generation third generation retinoids remember we have retinoid like compounds now what is that particular retinoid like compounds is your adapalene right so if you take the retinoid like compounds the drug in this particular group is your adapalene right it is your adapalene next now if you take the adverse effects associated with this drug remember this particular retinoids these are potent teratogens because these are potent teratogens these are contraindicated in pregnancy right these are contraindicated in pregnancy so this is a very very important point these are potent teratogens and that is the reason why remember these are contraindicated in right these are contraindicated in pregnancy next now apart from this the other adverse effects if you see this particular retinoids remember this particular retinoids they can cause right they can cause dry skin and apart from this the individual can have nose bleeds right nose bleeds conjunctivitis alopecia that is loss of hair 
muscular pain and then the individual will have or can cause the retinoids can cause pseudo tumor cerebri now what is the pseudo tumor cerebri means is remember the word pseudo is false it's a false tumor right and why are we using this word pseudo tumor cerebri because in this particular clinical condition of pseudo tumor cerebri the individual will have clinical manifestation similar to that of what he will have if there is tumor within the brain what will be the clinical feature if the tumor is present within the brain that will be the features of raised intracranial pressure that is severe headache projectile vomiting altered sensorium or the individual can have seizures or the individual can also have can also land up in coma and finally death so similar features are present even in pseudo tumor cerebri but it's a false tumor it is not a tumor actually but the clinical features will be similar to that of the tumor if it is present within an individual next these retinoids can also cause mood alterations right can also cause mood alterations so these are the adverse effects associated with this particular retinoids now out of these particular drugs what we have discussed you take this particular drug tretinoin tretinoin it is used for acne vulgaris and it is also used as an adjuvant agent for treating the photo aging okay so if you take this particular drug tretinoin it is used in case of acne vulgaris and it is also used as an adjuvant agent right it is also used as an adjuvant agent for treating right for treating the photo aging now apart from this remember the other important drug that is tazarotene now if you take this particular tazarotene it is approved for psoriasis and as well as acne vulgaris so this is approved for psoriasis and as well as the acne vulgaris next then we have another drug that is allitretinoin right other drug that is allitretinoin now if you take this allitretinoin remember this allitretinoin is approved only for the treatment of skin manifestations of kaposi's sarcoma all right so this particular allitretinoin remember it is approved only for the treatment of skin manifestations right skin manifestations of kaposi's sarcoma right skin manifestations of kaposi's sarcoma all right next now you take this particular drug that is isotretinoin right isotretinoin remember isotretinoin is indicated for the treatment of severe nodulocystic acne vulgaris okay so if you take this particular drug that is isotretinoin where is it used in case of severe nodular right in case of severe nodular or nodulocystic right nodulocystic acne vulgaris so this is the clinical condition where this particular isotretinoin is used remember the adverse effects associated with the isotretinoin it may result in hyperlipidemia myalgia and as well as arthralgia okay myalgia arthralgia now apart from myalgia and as well as arthralgia right this drug can also cause hyperlipidemia next now you take this drug acetretin remember acetretin it is a major metabolite of etretinate right it is a major metabolite of a drug which is called as etretinate and where is this used remember this acetretin was used for psoriasis but it is withdrawn why due to very long half life of nearly 2 to 3 days right so acetretin remember it is a major metabolite of etretinate 
right it is a major metabolite of tretinate and the point what you should remember is this particular acetretin was used in the treatment of right was used in the treatment of psoriasis but this is withdrawn due to long t half and how much is that particular long t half that is nearly around 2 to 3 days right that is nearly around 2 to 3 days next next you take the drug bixarotene right now if you take this particular drug that is bixarotene remember bixarotene it is used in case of cutaneous t cell lymphoma right so bixarotene it is used in case of a dermatological condition which is called as cutaneous t cell lymphoma right and the point what you should remember is this particular bixarotene it may cause lipid abnormalities it may cause hypothyroidism and as well as the gastrointestinal symptoms so bixarotene remember it can cause dyslipidemia right it can cause dyslipidemia wherein the individual can have lipid abnormalities this particular drug can cause hypothyroidism and as well as the gastrointestinal symptoms right as well as the gastrointestinal symptoms so these are the uses and adverse effects of this bexarotene now let me shortly revise the entire retinoids remember this particular retinoid group of drugs like we have three generations first generation like we have retinol tretinoin isotretinoin and as well as allitretinoin second generation we have acetretin and third generation we have tizarotene and as well as bexarotene and we have a retinoid like compound which is nothing but your adapalene now remember the very important point is these are a potent teratogens that is why these are contraindicated in pregnancy and these drugs may cause the adverse effects like dry skin nasal bleeding conjunctivitis alopecia muscular pain pseudo tumor cerebri and mood alterations now if you take the uses of the individual drugs like first you take the tretinoin tretinoin is used for acne vulgaris and it is also used as an adjuvant agent for treating the photo aging next you take the drug that is tazarotene tazarotene remember it is approved for psoriasis and as well as the acne vulgaris next you take the drug that is allitretinoin allitretinoin it is approved only for the treatment of skin manifestations of kaposi sarcoma then you take the drug that is isotretinoin remember isotretinoin is indicated for treatment of severe nodulocystic acne vulgaris and the adverse effects of this particular isotretinoin is it can cause hyperlipidemia arthralgia and as well as myalgia next you take the drug that is acetretin remember this particular acetretin it is a major metabolite of etretinate and this is used for psoriasis but it is withdrawn due to very long half life of nearly 2 to 3 days then you take the drug bixarotene remember the bixarotene it is the drug which is used in case of cutaneous t cell lymphoma and the adverse effect is it can cause lipid abnormalities hypothyroidism and as well as the gastrointestinal symptoms so this is about your retinoids which are used in dermatology next let me discuss the other group of therapy in dermatology it is your photochemotherapy